Hello everyone, welcome to week one lecture videos and I start with learning objective one. Throughout this course, we will discuss the importance of framing an investment philosophy and use of this investment philosophy as a basis for managing a portfolio. Therefore, the first learning objective today is to define what we mean by investment philosophy and explain why it is important. To understand why investment philosophy is important, we need to take a step back and we need to understand what portfolio management is all about. Portfolio management is the application of investment principles and philosophies in order to manage the wealth of individuals. The individual's goal when they participate in financial markets is to maximize their utility. The utility is their overall happiness, which is a measure of their ability to consume goods and services in the future. The way we maximize utility is looking at the risk and return, maximizing their return and minimizing risk. The process of portfolio management does this through two steps. These two steps are security selection and asset allocation. Security selection is the process of picking particular securities within an asset class. For example, within equity asset class, it might be choosing between what proportion of portfolio you are going to invest in BHP shares and what proportion you are going to invest in Commonwealth Bank shares. On the other hand, asset allocation is determining the, what proportion of your wealth is going to invest in each asset class. Now, as we will see throughout this course, that there are different approaches to portfolio management that can manage this question of risk versus return, and all these different processes apply different specifications of security selection and asset allocation. So the next question is what we mean by investment philosophy. So investment philosophy is a coherent way of thinking about financial markets, how they work, and how you might try to exploit financial markets in terms of maximizing your own future wealth. So you can think of an investment philosophy as the plans that an investor has that determines that the management of their portfolio. Couple of things to note here. The investment philosophy is a very broad way of thinking about markets. It is not an investment strategy. Investment strategy are the specific process that you are going to take in order to execute that. So investment philosophy is much broader. You can think of it as a core set of beliefs that's used in order to generate a future investment strategy. So how do you come up with an investment philosophy? First of all, what we need is to choose the trade and we need to understand some of the basic principles of finance. You need to understand how risk and return works and you need to calculate uh, this risk and return. You need to understand financial statements and you need to understand some frictions of the market, for example, trading cost. Step two is quite important and you need to understand about how the market works and why does it break down. So particularly, it is really important philosophical argument that we brought up against here is the question of market efficiency. So an investor needs to form their own views and beliefs on how efficient they think the markets are. If you think that markets are perfectly efficient, then it makes sense that you diversify your portfolio as widely as possible and seek to minimize your transaction costs. However, if you think that market is less than perfectly efficient, then you seek to exploit that inefficiency. But rather than just saying a general statement that market is less than perfectly efficient, an investment philosophy needs to identify exactly where you believe markets will break down and the investment strategy will then identify then how you are going to exploit that market failure. Now, through the process of developing an investment philosophy, it is important that you also consider your own personal character state. So the investment philosophy doesn't fit everyone because if you need to find out your own version. Okay, so you need to consider your risk aversion, your time horizon, your, your tax status. So there are different investment philosophies we will be discussing throughout this course. 
for example, market timing, asset selection, active investing, passive investing, momentum and control and investing, value and growth investing, uh, ge geographical investing, and, and, and so on. So throughout this course, we will be discussing this investment philosophies and we will also learn how to exploit them. Let's take a very simple example of an investment philosophy. Let's say that you are an investor and you believe that markets are less than perfectly efficient due to investors underreacting to news. So news come out and investors take a while to adapt that news into market prices. Therefore, your philosophy might be that stocks that have had good news announcement, for example, positive earning announcement, might be underpriced. They are underpriced because the positive news is not immediately filtered into the price. There is a slow process by which that information is diffused, resulting in underpricing. Whereas bad stocks that recently had a bad earning announcement might be overpriced because information is not fully embedded, since the decreasing in the value of the stock is not currently reflected in the prices. So it would be your investment philosophy. So what would be your strategy to, execute, to actually exploit this? So it might be possible that you buy stocks or the positive, positive earning announcement and whereas you sell stocks that have negative earning announcement. So as we discuss investment philosophy and uh, an example, now we see some real world cases. So first of all, Wingate Asset Management, this is from their own website, that what they actually do, they stick to the idea that they think established products, track records are going to be quite valuable. They are going to avoid paying for blue skies or avoid paying for growth that might be not tangible. And they are going to also identify risk and use valuation approaches in order to identify the reasonableness of an investors. This is an investment philosophy, and this is known as value investment. Some other uh, examples, Acorn Capital. So Acorn Capital, they actually clearly, their investment philosophy is that as small stocks uh, have less efficient, so they try to exploit undertaking fundamental analysis to buy small stocks. They are small cap investors. And the last one is series asset management. Their investment philosophy is investment is uh, good for different geographical uh, diversification. So they actually try to potentially uh, exploit the underpricing of stocks in the Asian markets. So they are actually Asian focused fundamental investors. So they believe on two macroeconomic trends. One is the geographic shifts and rising incomes in the Asian markets. And they think that um, despite these two factors, uh, the Asian equities are underpriced. So they try to exploit this. So this is learning objective one. Uh, please watch the next video for learning objective two. Thank you.